And all right, we are set. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Patrick and I are currently here in Belize, and we're excited to chat with you about the updates that you're going to be seeing in Casita Village. Uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot of momentum, a lot of excitement about around Nicaragua recently. And to really make sure that we are able to help folks, um, we are going to be doing a rebrand of Casita Village. I think you're really going to enjoy what you see. There's been a lot of time and energy and thought about how it is that we really could capture what we're looking to capture within the community. We're going to talk about what that's going to be throughout the presentation here, but I'm going to anticipate it'll be about 15, 20 minutes of information, and then we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. So I think many of you know Patrick Kiebert, our Chief Operating Officer. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Jensen. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ECI. Uh, I live here in Belize, although I do go back and forth to all of the countries that we're working in quite a bit. Uh, Belize is home, and I was based in Nicaragua, actually, in 2012 and 2013. But just as a quick overview for everybody, ECI Development, as you probably know, is the parent company to Grand Pacifica. Grand Pacifica is one of the properties that we have within the ECI portfolio. We have properties here in Belize. Our part, we partnered with the Best Western and the Marriott for branded hotel properties here, investment and also residential homes. Uh, there are also the tiny homes that are being launched within Nicaragua. You probably noticed that within the AVA community there at Grand Pacifica. In addition, the Grand Highlands property in Panama, there's a tiny home community there. And also here in Belize over the water tiny homes, which has been really quite ex exciting to see all of that start construction and come into play. In addition to that, for our Grand Pacifica owners, you are probably aware of the fact that we have teak farms on site. We also have teak farms within Panama. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. We wanted to make sure though that we made time uh, for you to talk about what's going on within the updates within your neighborhood. So I don't think I really need to go too far into the details about Grand Pacifica. You've all been there before. You're very familiar with the project, the property uh, you decided to own within Grand Pacifica for a reason, whether it was to relocate overseas or spend some part of the year there or just simply looking for an investment or ways to diversify your portfolio. But what we're seeing over the 20 years uh, that we've been in business is that people are continuing to look now really more than ever for solutions, for plan B, is for a place where they can really go and feel like home outside of their home country. And this is nothing new for all of you. That's why you are homeowners within Grand Pacifica already. But we're seeing that uh, you will be welcoming more neighbors to Grand Pacifica. And we're really excited to see the, the community of like-minded owners continue to grow. But uh, with that, people, we're seeing that people's desires are really starting to evolve too. And you know, maybe at one point there was this whole desire for large single family homes or larger estate lots. But we're seeing that a lot of people are thinking more consciously now. They're looking, um, and you'll see that they're the bottom part of the screen concepts, such as minimalization, sustainability, eco-friendly, and there's a big demand for it. Mm -hmm. And while our tiny homes capture it within the AVA community, they capture a great part of that market, those homes are a little too tiny for some people. So we are looking to serve the folks who want something a little bit larger. Um, I don't know if I necessarily need to jump through the site map here. I think many of you know where your home is, but just uh, as a quick recap within the Casita Village, that's what we're talking about here on the presentation. It's the orange community. I think you can see my cursor, but the orange community here about midway through the screen is the Casita Village area that we're going to be focusing on. Um, Ava, I mentioned that a slide ago, which is the tiny home community. Those homes are about 300 to about 400 square feet uh, located uh, right north of the purple Santa Barbara. You, have, I think you can see my cursor right over here on uh, Yasa Chio Beach. But I don't want to divert the conversation too much. Anything more, Patrick, that you want to add about Grand Pacifico or the neighborhoods? No, and we can talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how this concept and, and mm -hmm. the re revitalization or rebranding of, of Casita Village is, 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 you know, has come about. And, and really, uh, to some extent, you folks that own in, in Casita Village are kind of early adopters to the concept that we've kind of locked onto in the last year or two. And that is the, you know, the minimalist of your homes are, you know, not massive and not wasting a lot of space. They're a great use of space. And that, you know, when, uh, about a couple of years ago, we, we had stepped back a little bit 
I mean, many of you probably realize how I became involved with Grand Pacifica or an ECI. I uh, bought a, a piece of land beside Casita Village, which is now called Milagro Verde, and you know, carved that up into a number of lots and, and built eco-friendly homes that are, you know, most most of them are, well, most of them were solar powered. Some of them are solar um, powered hybrid systems, so grid and and the panels and batteries. And, and that was, came from my kind of background of being involved in, in, in the whole eco-friendly thing by living, ultimately moving from a larger house to a smaller house, to a condominium, to a boat, and, uh, you know, get really involved in, in the whole you know, conserving energy and also producing my own. I, I don't like to pay power bills any more than, than you guys do. And Nicaragua power is pretty, you know, pretty expensive. So the, the more you can minimize that and, and lower the cost, of, that, you know, kind of going full circle here. But the, to me, the, the, you know, we call ourselves now in, in, in ECI is eco-sensible, not eco-fanatics. You know, I, I don't think eco-friendliness really catches on in people in their home building or, or modifying their homes, unless it's you know financially advantageous as well. So we focus on you know a lot of that. And so that we find ourselves kind of being eco sensible. And what we're going to talk about here is 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 exactly that. But the Casita Village homes have always had what we call a smaller footprint and a smaller price tag. And really, what's driven this? And and my son Spencer and I you know literally sat around a couple of years ago and said this. You know all these things that are kind of rolling together right now um, you know people like the minimalist idea like not having extra space or clutter and everything um, they, they like the eco-friendliness being you know good earth citizens but also saving money on utilities with you know gray water reuse lets you save on water um, solar power generation obviously lets you save on power and then sustainability was another thing where people love to have their own um, gardens and orchards and things like that to, to grow some of their own food, if not all their own food, and really can bring your cost of living down to, you know, zero or next to zero. And then that concept we, we started working on. And then, and what you see in the AVA community, which is the eco feel is, is really the, the beginning of that. And, um, sorry. It looks like, I think it might be Val who's on. We have one other person who's, okay. who's well, joining us over here. Not sure where we're going with our what happened to our video, but anyway, they, and and basically, Ava is a is a is the was a kind of a trial test concept of that, where we took tiny homes, eco homes, and the sustainability concept and put it together, and really what that you know what that combined with was the Plan B that Rachel had mentioned, and people obviously you know just put the cards on the table people in the US and Canada are a lot of them are frustrated with what's going on between politics and riots and all the you know censorship and all sorts of different things um, I know in Canada right now in certain provinces you can barely leave and I mean it, it's it's getting a bit ridiculous in some areas and and we did we kind of were, were lucky in that way and that we, we put together this this tiny eco sustainability concept of a community together at the same time that a whole lot of people started looking for a plan B. Yeah. And we were overwhelmed with the popularity of the AVA community, which like Rachel said, those those homes are like 300, 250 to 500 or less square feet, very small homes. You're really only you know, building the kitchen, the bathroom and a bedroom, but that's really all you need to use in a, in a tropical environment. And you folks that own there know that you know a lot of time you're outdoors or you're, you're on the beach or wherever you are. And, uh, you know, that together with that plan to be, we, we created a first phase in AVA and all of a sudden, you know, we had basically a hundred reservations for a hundred homes. I mean, that's more than double what's currently at Grand Pacifica right now. And, and, but a lot of those people like the concept, but they'd also like something a little bit bigger than tiny home and tiny homes are defined at basically under 600 square feet. So most of the casino village homes are kind of the 800 to 1100 square feet range. And we have some new models that we're going to be introducing in this as well. So sorry, I talked a long time, but I think that'll save us a lot of time on future yeah, slides too. Sure, sure. We'll just I always tell Rachel through. I'm going to be really quick, and then I'd be around. <laughs> well, there's a lot of great information in here too. <laughs> but I mean, the bottom line is is really that um, what we're what we're doing is we're expanding on the Ava concept, and um, people that are looking for. Uh, a, a little bit more expensive home than uh, at Ava, but also a little bit more space, but not necessarily right on the water, 
and and so we've we've created this uh what we're backing up a little again mo most of these communities were kind of naming after after spanish names so we have tests it's like tiny eco sustainable and smart then we have uh you know ava eco village Asachio, um, bella which is a beachfront eco lifestyle alternative and then mila modern innovative lifestyle alternative they're all acronyms but they're also all names and um Mila is the rebranding of Casita Village. And I think you're going to really like the concept that we're bringing together here of, of creating eco and sustainable options within the community and, and some new amenities and a lot of a lot of interesting things. So yeah, I mean, what, why eco-friendliness? It's probably something you don't really need until you even talk about. I think everybody knows, you know, the, the eco movement is pretty strong, but particularly in Grand Pacific, where in, you know, in, in Nicaragua, we do have issues with power outages fairly often. Um, the homes in Milagro Verde that have, you know, battery backup and solar power charging those batteries don't even notice the power outages. In fact, I remember a lot of times where people used to go to Milagro Verde to plug in their phones and laptops and things because that was the only place with power. And we've struggled this last year a little bit with the ups and downs of power as they are renovating and putting in new transformer systems and things. So, you know, that that's that's a, a nice byproduct of being eco-friendly as well, for sure. So what what's Mila? I mean, what I guess the highlights of Mila, it's really the uh, again, the, the blend of the minimalist living with, uh, you know, beautiful homes and, and eco-friendly. I know a lot of people in the past have, all, have often asked me, it's like, well, can I put solar panels on my homes? And yeah, absolutely you can. And, you know, for, for whatever reason, a lot of people think they can't. The only rule we've had at Grand Pacifica is that you can't see the solar panels from when you're walking down the sidewalk or, or you know, next to the home. And part of that is, you know, when the sun rises or sun sets, you know, panels tend to reflect a lot of light and blind in your, your eyes. You don't want that when you're driving down the road. But we have the beauty of being close enough to the equator and in, in Nicaragua that you can, they basically lie flat nine to 12 degrees off of, off of horizontal. So reflections are going back up into the sky anyway. But the highlights are really the, uh, you know, the optional off-grid solar or hybrid systems. Um, the new homes are all going to be, you know, built with, uh, with solar hybrid systems in, in them. Um, but you are also welcome as existing owners to, uh, to, to add package. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But we really, I mean, I guess today is really about, you know, you as owners, we wanted to make sure that you had the first chance to, to see what we wanted to do before introducing this to the public. And we, we expect it to be quite popular. So this is the, the, the um, Mila layout, the Casita Village layout of, of lots. The lots haven't changed at all. They're going to be exactly the same location, same size. Um, what's changed is kind of the common areas you'll see um shared uh, community gardens and orchards in the inside so if you want to plant carrots or you know we'll put in mango trees and banana trees and that sort of thing as well but you know we're going to carve out some kind of plots for gardens and if you want to use them you're more than welcome to and and you know we'll, we'll figure out the details of how that works in terms of you know shared produce or you know some people get a plot and you know each person has a but this is really the an early concept but we wanted yeah. we wanted you to, to 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 know about it up front so you know that like the I'm sorry, I'm go back. No, no it's okay the, the pool for instance we we haven't 100 percent defined what the pool is going to be in terms of size or exact location but we do expect to put in either a natural pool or saltwater pool in there and a little palapa obviously for a shady spot to sit beside it and um, that sort of thing so it, a, a lot of this is conceptual i'm, I'm going to be at grand pacifica mid next week and uh, you know we're going to be out there with Raquel, who's our our brilliant landscaper. That's made some such some of the really beautiful landscaping that you've seen, like in, in the boulevard between the new paving that goes past Malaga Verde. That's a lot of Raquel's work there. And and so you know we're going to really you know start mapping out exactly what this looks like. But again, we wanted to get you involved early so that you know what's coming. We talked a bit about this already, but I mean, really, the, the concept of, of tiny homes or, or the next step up is considered in the in the tiny home vernacular is considered mini homes, and really the overall concept is right sizing. And um, in a, in a climate where, where I grew up in central Canada on the prairies, you kind of needed a bigger home because you couldn't go outside for half the winter or, or because it was just too cold. 
in summer there was nothing but mosquitoes so it was kind of like you get one of the two but so people tended to have bigger homes but if you're living you know in grand pacifica there's not really a huge reason to have a big great room or all, all these kind of extra spaces that you don't use that much of so we found that the tiny homes and the, and the mini home sizes to see the sizes have been very popular and we've already talked about communal gardens and on the off-grid or hybrid power so the, the communities that we have now, you know, Rachel, they've heard enough of me talking. Why don't you just tell them a little bit sure. about Ava, Mila, and Bella? Sure. So Ava is the community that we showed you before that was just uh, north of Santa Barbara. These are the tiny homes, Eco Village, Asachio. So they range, as Patrick mentioned, 250 to about 450 square feet. Uh, there are four different models there. And within the Ava community, we have uh, two phases totaling about 100 homes. At this point, 97 about are reserved. And uh, it's been exciting to see this movement of people who are interested in, in conserving their energy and living sustainably and being eco-friendly and off the grid. And of course, reducing their power bills, but doing it within a group of other like-minded owners. Now, as Patrick mentioned, B Mila is the next size up. This is the, the 1,100 to 1,400 square foot homes, uh, you know, really paralleling what has already been done in Casita Village, but giving, uh, giving a new look to these homes and giving options to people who had originally come to us and inquired about Ava, but realized that maybe those homes are a little bit too small for their lifestyle. And it happens. We've had people reach out with family of a three, four, five, six people, and Ava's not the right size for them. But something like Mila is the two and three bedroom homes where they don't need to be directly on the beach. They just want a beautiful place to live where they're living sustainably and living comfortably. And then the next level are the Bella homes. Uh, we haven't done an official launch of Bella, but this will be a new community uh, located on the beach uh, right there by Ava. And so these are also two and three bedroom homes, again, adopting those eco-friendly models that we are integrating into Ava and, Bell and Mila, but these will be beachfront. So we're gonna have three different sort of communities for these homeowners who are interested in really, really uh, living, living well, living uh, sustainably. So stay tuned for Bella. We haven't done the official launch there yet, but me a sneak peek yeah that, that is that is a sneak peek but uh you get to see it you get to see it here first and like patrick mentioned we really uh, did want you to be aware of, of what's going on within mila which will be uh, the name that you'll be hearing for casita village uh, because obviously you are a homeowner there but there's a lot of exciting activity a lot of uh, a, a lot of new things new and exciting things that'll come to the community to really enhance that neighborhood that you're already in and so just a breakdown of the different locations. So Mila, uh, Casita Village, which is the orange grouping over here to the right. Uh, and then Bella will be located. You can see it in front of Ava. Um, there are the pods there, pods of about eight, nine homes. And then behind Bella is where Ava is going to be located. So um, Mila, we know is in a, a great location. You're 10 minute walk from the beach. It's easy for you to get to the, uh, the, the Las Perlas condo pool area and also sea salt. So you're in a really great location there. And if you are willing to and wanting to adopt some of the looks and the facades that you saw in a couple of the other renderings, you are able to do so. We'll have a slide on that in a bit, but uh, do note that it is going to be uh, going to be a, a, a bit of a different feel there within the previous Casita Village area. Thanks, Rachel. The, you're very this, so you're, you're seeing some of the new so what we did is we took um, a little bit larger than the, the existing casita in casita village and and created some new completely new plans that could be hybrid systems you can see the solar system on the top right one they all have that built into them um there's a there's a two bedroom single well let's just go through them sure yeah let's do it there's a two bedroom we've called atlantis it's a two bedroom two bath you can see this one this is all recorded so if you want to take a look back later and, and see more details and you know, we'll be putting together a brochure for the Mila community and um, you know, with a lot more details in it than, than we can really go through today. But this is a, you know, a similar, a little bit, little bit different design, but you know, similar design to the existing um, casitas in the Casita Village. And you can see what some of the renderings of the, the interior space, um, you know, a, a combination of still being the Spanish colonial ex exterior with the a mix of Spanish colonial and, and modern on the interior. This is the one called the El Dorado. This is actually a two floor, um, two story home with three bedrooms. So it's a uh, 1400 ish square feet. And um, 
you know, has a, a, a bit of a different look again. You know, with, I, I think we've managed to design some really some pretty homes mm -hmm. here. Um, and uh, they've, they've really turned out nicely. I think the efficient use of the space, they all fit on the, uh, you know, within the setbacks on the existing um, lots that are, that are in Casita Village. Um, so we've had to be very, you know, creative and efficient with making sure that we didn't have to change the lot layouts. And these are some of the renderings from the interior of the El Dorado three bedroom model. And a few more. And again, you'll see in you know in the some of these slides, you can see the the way we've designed in the solar panels. It's it's a it's a bit of an art form, you know, with the slope of the roof and where the panels are located in the hours of the day that you can get sunlight on them and all those things. But uh, you know that it all goes into the part of the design. And you know we wanted to make sure that if you know if you did like this design, um, you know. I've been asked by Casita Village owners in the past, and like I said, if they ask me, can I put solar panels on my home and say, absolutely, you can. We just got to make sure that it works and it fits, and you know, they're not, you know, you know, they're not unesthetically placed so that you know it's not too nice to look at. But if you like, this is actually a, um, one of the existing Casita Village model homes, exactly as it is, with a little bit of a different facade on the front mm -hmm. and a pergola on the back with the um, with the with the panels on the on the roof of the pergola. So it just gives you an idea of if, if you were interested in, in having the kind of the, the, the little bit different look, not there's anything that, I, you know, the, the homes in Casita Village are beautiful homes, but if you like this kind of look, um, you know, it, can, it doesn't take too much to, to change the facade in the front and add a pergola in the back where you can put on um, a solar system and, and, and add all those components. So, you know, you can really, you know, cut down on your power and consumption and also, you know, Kind of breeze right through any power outages without really caring. So that's really the the you know the introduction. Like I, there's a lot to be done. Like I said, I'm going to be in in Nicaragua and Grand Pacifica next week. I'm going to be out at Casita Village and Mila and and you know kind of staking things out a bit. But this isn't going to happen overnight. This is you know we're going to we want to plan this out nicely. Um, you know, and to some extent, I guess in some ways you could say we can't win because we can we either don't say anything until it's 100% planned or or we tell you everybody as an existing owner up front you know what the plan is going to be so i wanted to you know instead of waiting too long let everybody know um, that this is coming uh, you know we're going to be working on you know improving the roads in casita village as, as as part of the project as well um, i know we you know we should have been doing more of that in the past and we you know we want to make sure that 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 happens mm -hmm. but i think you'll see as um you know, I, I, I kind of promised people a couple of years ago as the COO, if we, you know, if we can make some sales on the property, you're going to see improvements. And I think we've been doing that. I mean, you've, you've seen quite a bit of paving happen. Um, there's continual paving going on. I'll be moving from the gate now towards the other direction, back towards Casita Village. We paved past Mila. I'm going to start calling it Mila now. No? <laughs> we, we paved past Mila. You know, a, a lot of the reason for that, obviously, is uh, the dust control that that should make a, a big difference in. I guess we're going into the rainy season here as we're recording this, but uh, you know, next season will be much easier to to live with the dust as you know, we continue to pave down that road. So you know, there's that. We've obviously built in uh, or just about this end of this month, the Momotomo building, which is the Las Perlas condominiums building, is is going to be completed and and you know able to be occupied. We're going to be starting on the Messiah building hopefully in the next few months. Um, you know, we've done a lot of things. We're working on completing the sewer system in, in all Grand Pacifica, which means in underground piping and lift stations and everything all to our state of the art sewer treatment center, which, you know, also makes it, uh, you know, it, it's just all around better. We don't have to run the sewer truck anymore and all those things. So, so a lot of this is, uh, you know, I, I, again, same with Mila here in Casita Village. We, you know, the more we can make sales in, in this community, the more money we can put back into it. So when, you know, the, 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 this will be somewhat paced by the by how popular it becomes, but you know, obviously, with the more sales, we'll get the the, the palapas and the pools and the gardens and everything going as quickly as we can. But there, there's no current timeline until we have nailed down all the details, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Do we have? Sorry, I'm just looking at the questions. Do we have cost estimates to, for the eco upgrades to the existing units? Um, don't hold me to this, but I will throw some numbers <laughs> out. I mean, 
typically a, a, a system for for the homes would probably be in you know if it's a high there's a lot of differences here i'm not it's a really tough question to answer i know eco or i know solar systems and wind systems and everything very well but it all depends if you're how much you're trying to power whether it's a hybrid system or a off totally off grid the ava homes for instance are totally off grid there's no other backup power you turn your air conditioner on it better work because the you know it's all on batteries and so those systems are pretty you know over the top they're they're kind of double probably what they need to be because you, when you're building these systems you if you're off grid completely you were building to the the peaks right you can't have a point where oh everything shuts down or but when you're building a hybrid system it can flip to the grid when when the batteries run out of power and so for for mila we kind of expect especially as you get bigger homes that there'll be hybrid systems i mean you're welcome to to build a completely you know off-grid home as well but you're probably looking for the solar system and batteries and all that components um, somewhere between ten fifteen thousand dollars would probably be a pretty accurate guess um, you know a, a little bit more obviously if you want to build in the pergola or the you know to build the pergola to if you want to put on that facade that we showed in the in the previous slide and there's a bit of you know obviously changes to uh, to the home but they're, they're not they're not massive we didn't go over the top here I just you know if you like that design so we will have more pricing if you're interested. Obviously, people can do this on their own. They don't need to go to Grand Pacifica to to do this. But you know, we wanted to make sure that everybody that already owned a home there felt you know included and and uh, that we we would love to see you kind of make hybrid homes as you know as well. I think it it just mm -hmm. makes the community better. It's a you know it's less cost for the people and it's just a you know a good Earth citizen thing to do. So. Yep, and you know, and, and you don't have to. I know that Patrick mentioned that, but you don't have to make these upgrades. You don't have to put the solar in. It really is up to you. But we just wanted for you to be aware of what's coming, what your neighborhood is going to look like. I think it, it's it's going to be stunning. I think it'll be you know fairly easy to integrate uh, the homes, your homes that are there, and then also uh, welcome the new neighbors that will be coming in and and part of the, the Mila community. Um, I can read the question out here, and Jeff, you're very welcome. It says we appreciate what. This will do for our property value. Yes, you're very welcome there. And then any thoughts on how annual fees will be impacted by these upgrades? Will we go back to any maintenance program? Um, I can talk in generalities about where we're going with the with the HOA fees. <clears throat> the newer homes will have a, a kind of a new a new program. We, we don't really want to be in the business of maintaining the homes. Um, you know, it, it, we're going to to be more like the other communities in in Grand Pacifica, where it's a X dollars per square meter, and and fits right in with you know. This is still Casita Village. When I started, Casita Village wasn't part of the Master Grand Pacifica Master Association. That was a a long battle to make sure that everything came together. And but but you are now part of the Grand Pacifica Master Association, and part of your fees go to the overall security and and common areas and all those things that make up the grand kind of master association and and the other part of your fees go to your own local community so we are reassessing the uh the uh, hoa fees for the new homes that will be purchased um, everyone that already owns a home is grandfathered and you know there will be probably future steps towards blending it all together because we really at the end of the day want to have everybody under the same plan but you know, and to some extent, one of the you know benefits of buying already or early is uh, you know you get grandfathered in at the existing at the existing rate. But you know there will be some slight increases over the years. I hope that answers the question. But it, you know, and, and it 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 also you get benefit, right? I mean, the the the, the cost may go up a little bit, but at the same time, you're going to have a, a pool in the community. You're going to have the gardens and the orchards and the you know, kind of another little yoga type of halapa and, and areas to to relax in and, and all these things. So it's not just like, you know, we're adding some new homes and upping fees. Right. So. Right. Yeah, that's very true. So it says, please show the common, the garden common area again, are the gardens in the area in the front or between the homes? Let me go back to the map there and we will make it easier for everyone to see. So the, the central, there's there's really two two main central areas to, to Mila. 
that already exist. We Those pathways that are in there now are actually the existing pathways. So we didn't have to rip up the existing pathways and redesign them. We designed around them. Um, you know, and we put in some interesting, you know, kind of areas for how the gardens aren't just square plots that, that you know, we wanted it to look nice as well. So, um, what exactly so is it in was the it? front? It says, are the gardens in the area in front or between the it, homes? Well, it's, it's really in the center, like right. a central area. I mean, it's between the homes, but that green space already exists. There's some really beautiful trees in there, and, and Val reminded me of that earlier. And so, you know, we, we want to keep those trees in, so we're going to make sure mm -hmm. we're going to blend them into how the gardens and the orchards work. But realistically, it, it is the same space in there. It's just instead of being kind of all grass and, and kind of barren looking, it, it's going to have all these uh, features and amenities that, that allow you to, to garden and, you know, grow fruit and, and go swimming. So I hope that answers the question. <coughs> So we're just seeing, yep, people thinking, uh, appreciate, truly appreciate the advance notice of these changes, looking forward to getting there full time. Awesome. Well, uh, I know that this was, you know, not, uh, there's, there's a lot of information here, but not a lot of information here as well. But we are going to continue to update you as we finalize everything, but at least wanted to get you updated. In the meantime, there are still like we said, things that are being worked out, but this is the general concept, the general overview of what the community is going to look like. And uh, in the meantime, we look forward to seeing you at Grand Pacifica. And we're always open to questions and I think you have both of our emails, so, so mm -hmm. please yep. feel free to, and if we didn't get to your question, then we'll, we're happy to do so. Awesome, well, thank you everybody. Have a really, a really great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you in person sometime soon. Bye-bye.